Hi guys, welcome to one more tutorial from me on Node.js. I am Ishwar Prasad from Hyderabad. In this video tutorial, in this screencast, we will discuss what is an event loop. We will look at how event loop helps us in Node.js applications. We will see what a role event loop plays in the Node.js. In the previous screencast, I have sh shown you two slides on what the Node.js application layers are and how does they look like. And in the last slide of the previous screencast, I have shown you what is the processing model of the Node.js application. In that we have discussed that all the applications, all the requests to the Node.js are handled by a single threaded asynchronous IO operations using an event loop. And this event loop is the backbone for all the single threaded application IO, uh, uh, single threaded IO operations, asynchronous IO operations that we do in the Node.js. So what exactly is an event loop now? We will go back to our screencast today and we will see in depth on what event loop is and how does it help us in Node.js applications in depth. Thanks for joining me. Let's start. Say for example, we have four blocks in this current screencast where the right top corner is the place where we have written few bit few lines of code and this line this these lines of our JavaScript gets executed when we run it. There is this block on the left side corner that is our stack. So in general whenever a bit of code, whenever a line of code in JavaScript has to be executed it is put onto the stack and then is popped out. When it is popped out its value is written to the console or web browser or is sent if it is running at the server. So if you believe we will we'll consider that this yellow box on the left corner at the bottom of the page uh, at the bottom of the screen as our console currently. So uh, on the right side corner we have another box that is a little orange grey color. This is the queue where our event loop puts all its data. We will discuss more in it as we go into the application as we go into the screencast. So what our application code looks like? It has two variables name and place. It, it's been assigned with a value called Ishwar and place is assigned with a value called Hyderabad and there is another method called app.get and it gets and it handles a request at slash show data and it has a function which takes two methods request and response and it sends some value called as name is from place okay so the name value is replaced and the place value is replaced and there are two console logs we all we all know how console logs are used uh, in JavaScript. So they write data out onto this console. So when I start executing, we all know that JavaScript is line by line execution. So when I start executing, what happens is my first line is picked up and is put onto the stack. So var name is equals to issuer is put onto the stack. Because it's been put onto the stack, it's now popped out. What does it mean? It is popped out it means it has to be written but because this is var name is equals to Ishwar you know about LHS and RHS in JavaScript how a variable uh, a variable called name is assigned with a value in, a, in one of the screencasts coming from now we will see what LHS is and RHS is uh, in terms of pure JavaScript but as far as this video is concerned that we have our stack accepting this value where name is equals to Ishwar okay and because it is put onto the stack it is popped out and now we are left with another one line less in our code so the next line gets executed this var place is equals to Hyderabad is put onto the stack and because it's onto the stack it is popped out then you have app dot get a method and it has a callback function called as function anonymous function that takes two parameters rec and res because it's an anonymous function and it is asynchronous because javascript understands that is uh, that it is an asynchronous because it's uh, uh, there is a function that's waiting for us in the callback it says can someone please take care of this and that someone is no one else other than event loop so this is the place where event loop jumps into the picture and it says hey javascript please let me hold on to this and please l allow me to take care of this bit of code that you have so what happens is event loop will pick up this piece of code and it puts it on it puts it in one place what is that place as you can see this top right we have the code that has been there 
uh, in our JavaScript. So event loop has picked it up from the code execution place and it has put in one place and this is nothing but the event queue. So whenever there is something that has to be executed in a synchronous way, what event loop does is it maintains a queue for itself. Every bit of code it, uh, it comes across and is to be handled asynchronously or is it encounters a bit of code that has to be executed at later part of the application processing. It puts that piece of code in the queue that it owns and it is the only owner of it. So the app.get function is placed into the queue of the event loop. Now we have console.log so it is put onto the stack because it's put onto the stack and it's just a console log it writes out. So you have your console with a text written on it I'll be executed without waiting for a read file then there is another one that's been put onto the stack and pushed out and it says end of the file now what event loop does in the meantime is event loop is having an eye on the bit of code that is getting executed so it has an eye on this right top box that you are seeing and it also has an eye on the stack of the JavaScript so whenever event loop whenever event loop says uh, whether I should write out the values that I have write out the code that I have in my queue it goes back to the code that is currently getting executed it checks whether there is anything left out apart from what that is there in its queue to be written out in the current uh, call or in the current function or in the current um, uh, scope of the application because there is none in our code bit it goes to the stack and it sees is there anything that is waiting in the stack to be executed is there something that is getting executed that is waiting to be executed it gets a no it gets a false so the stack also returns a false to the event loop so now because the code that is left to be executed is none and because the stack is empty it can take some values so the event loop says okay fine I'll clear my queue and how does it clear the queue it clears bit by bit it means a uh, code snippet after the code snippet if there are two app dot gets then first app dot get gets executed first and then the other gets executed what is this execution it means the event loop picks up the data from its queue and pushes it onto the stack you see the event loop queue is now empty because it has pushed onto the stack because the stack is empty and the code that needs to be executed is empty and because it is on the stack we know the philosophy of how the stack works because uh, it po it pops out the data from it and we have response.send name and there is a string called is from and there is another variable called as place so it picks up these two values from uh, of the va of the variables name and place and replaces them and it puts the contents onto the console so this is how the issuer is from hyderabad is framed onto the stack and because it's on the stack it gets executed and it's put on the console that's how the event loop mechanism works not just in JavaScript but not just in Node.js but in JavaScript in general the event loop does this activity of maintaining a queue and puts all the code that has to be executed at later stage of the application or that has to be executed asynchronously so when someone now asks you what is event loop You'll, I'm sure that you'll be able to answer it comfortably and I'm sure that you're gonna give them insight of what event loop is with some example and with some explanation and with some images. Thanks for joining me. This is Ishwar signing off. Please do subscribe for me for more videos on this. If you like, please do share it with your friends. Uh, in the next session, we'll start up uh, with building a REST node, a Node.js REST API and we'll use a backend database to save our data and what's the database it's a surprise for all of you it's not the mongodb that any everyone does a tutorial on there's something special and so stay tuned to me thank you so much for joining goodbye